my dear friends good evening to all greetings to you in jesus name i am happy to invite you to join this uh, sunday evening worship service this is the second sunday after trinity let us begin our worship keep a few moments of silence let us pray into your presence we come god of grace and peace who was and is and ever shall be the eternal one into fellowship we come bound together in the love that died and rose again for us our savior jesus christ amen तारी सृष्टि के माने तुम्हें हो तारी सृष्टि के रक्षक तुम्हें हो पढ़ते हैं तुझको सागर प्रणाम गाते तेरे ही गुण गा तारी सृष्टि के माने तुम्हें हो तारी सृष्टि सृष्टि को तेरा सहारा सारे संकट से हमको बचाया तेरे हाथों में जीवन हमारा अपनी राहों पे चलाना सारी सृष्टि को तेरा सहारा सारे संकट से हमको तेरे हाथों में जीवन हमारा अपनी राहों पे चलाना आ let us do the responsive reading for our responsive reading this evening psalm 150 is chosen psalm 150 praise the lord praise god in his sanctuary praise him in his mighty firmament praise him for his mighty deeds praise him according to his surpassing greatness praise him with trumpet sound praise him with lute and harp praise him with tambourine and dance praise him with strings and pipe praise him with with clanging cymbals praise him with loud clashing cymbals let everything that breathes praise the lord praise the lord amen praise the lord 
the old testament reading is taken from genesis chapter 2 verses 5 to 9 when no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up for the lord god had not caused it to rain on the land and there was no man to work the ground and the mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground then the lord god formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature and the lord god planted a garden in eden in the east and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground the lord god made to spring up every tree that is present to the sight and good for food the tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil The New Testament lesson for this evening service is taken from Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each one of them all of them were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other languages as the spirit gave them ability now they were devout to the jews from every nation under heaven living in jerusalem and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because of each one heard them speaking in the native language of each amazed and astonished they asked are not all these who are speaking galileans and how is it that we hear each of us in our own la- la- native language parthians medes elamites and residents of mesopotamia judaea and cappadocia pontus and asia Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, "What does this mean?" Here ends this lesson. Praise be to God. Oh 
worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Dear friends, I am happy to introduce our uh, worship leader and the preacher for this evening. He is Dr. Arvind Jayakumar and uh, he is an alumnus of Gurukul. He is a good friend of Gurukul. Um, we studied together long back and now I am happy to introduce him as a, one of the professors in the Old Testament department. He has joined this year and we welcome him in on all our behalf. Dr. Arvind Jayakumar has uh, done his PD and MTH from Gurukul. He is an alumnus and he did his uh, PhD at the University of Hamburg, Germany. The title of the dissertation is Yahweh at Work, Creation Theme in the Book of Deutero Isaiah. Dr. Arvind is married to Mrs. Lily Jayakumar. He has got a lo lovely son. His name is Alfred Lemmy Jayakumar and a lovely daughter, Judith Vivian. Dr. Arvind will be helping us in our college as the webmaster for this year, also the warden of our men's hostel. May God bless him and we welcome you, Reverend Dr. Arvind Jayakumar. Thank you, sir, for those kind words of introduction. Greetings to all in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a pleasure and privilege for me to share God's word via this online community worship service. At the outset, I would like to thank God for giving me the great opportunity to be part of my alma mater as a teacher and it's absolutely like homecoming experience. Gurukul is a place where I started my theological journey and I am always indebted to all my teachers and mentors who had molded and equipped me in the course of my theological endeavors. At the same time, let me also take this opportunity to thank our beloved principal, Reverend Dr. John Samuel, and the college administration for offering me this greatest privilege to be part of this prestigious institution. Before pondering over the word of God, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Those were the last words of George Floyd, who was crushed to death by a police officer in the United States. And it invited a worldwide protest against the systemic oppression of the black lives under the hashtag Black Lives Matter. The last words of George Floyd echoes not only the cry of black lives, but it has become a paradigm that resonates and brings to the forefront the unnoticed, unseen, unheard and ignored screams of humankind and the entire creation which are still audible and can be visualized in various forms. Friends, at present we are living in a world of pandemic which attacks our lungs and the clarion cry of I can't breathe echoes back and forth each and every second. Quite recently we have witnessed and heard the cry of our fellow citizens, the migrant laborers, who on their way to reach home by foot were exhausted and howled. We can't breathe and ultimately they lost their lives. The creation is groaning because of the way how it is being exploited by humankind and even the creation says, I can't breathe anymore. The people who are discriminated in the name of gender and race and so on are suffocated and say, we can't breathe due to the oppressive and hierarchical structures. In this context of suffocation and breathlessness in different forms, a college theme for this academic year, breathe the breath of God serves as a catalyst 
so to meditate and engage in theological discourses in order to redefine refine and revitalize our theological journey the scripture lessons which are read to us provide deeper insights in order to understand the given theme and its relevance in our present day life realities the first lesson that is genesis chapter 2 is one of the captivating chapter or passages which narrates how the first man adam came into existence by the creative work of god especially chapter 2 verse 7 says and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul if we visualize and reimagine this event we can perceive that the lord god like a skilled potter or like an innovative sculptor uses his inventive imagination and forms and molds a human like figure with all different parts of the body according to his imagination in line with his image and likeness and now a figure made out of the dust of the earth is ready but it remains as an immovable mud statue but the next half of the verse depicts the remaining engineering work of the lord god which brought forth life into this immovable figure the lord god now breathes or respires into the nostrils of the mud image the breath of life nishma khayyin and this mud image has become an incredible living being and in the end god's imagination was absolutely materialized the breath of life transformed the big figure made out of dust from a lifeless collection of matter into a living creature or soul what a spectacular act of innovation of creating human kind which is unimaginable the categorical materialization of god's creation of man reveals three significant things according to this passage firstly man or human kind is a compound being he is a combination of dust and spirit or soul secondly the first man adam represents the whole human race he shares his identity with the entire humanity and thirdly the lord god breathed the life giving spirit and it signifies that the entire humanity shares the breath of life breathed by god among the aspects mentioned in the process of creation of man the most significant aspect from my observation is the final aspect breath of life god has breathed into the nostrils of the first man which transformed him into a living being with life giving spirit sharing the identity with the first man god has instilled in us the breath of life the life giving spirit is given to us in order to celebrate life and to resist and transform all life destroying forces by nature god has instilled in us the spirit of life breath of life the life giving spirit in the context of uncertainty that prevails everywhere we are called to realize that we are filled with the spirit of life and we are entrusted with the task of dynamic trans- transformation and change which we have to bring within us and should extend to the entire creation dear friends in christ we need this realization and the world needs this realization as well in the world filled with hate in the form of hate speeches and violent actions we are called to breathe the breath of love in the context of injustice that prevails in different forms at different levels we are called to breathe the breath of resistance in order to make justice flow like a river in a world filled with discrimination in different forms we are invited to breathe the breath of equality and impartiality in a world filled with intolerance we are called to breathe the breath of tolerance in a world filled with chauvinism we are invited to breathe the breath of egalitarianism in a world filled with chauvinism we are invited to breathe the breath of egalitarianism 
In a world crippled under the threat of the pandemic, the novel COVID-19, we are called to breathe the breath of positivism to overcome this crisis situation. The then German dictator of the Nazi regime, Adolf Hitler, held the authority and exercised it not to bring life, but to take life. His project of anti-Semitism was the reflection of his hatred against other races, especially the Jews. Series of anti-Semitic laws were enacted in order to systematically wipe away Jews from the face of Europe, which led to periodic persecutions, expulsions and massacre of Jews and eventually enormity of genocide, that is Holocaust. It is a matter of fact to know with what we are filled. Jesus said, I have come so that they may have life and have life in all its fullness. God invites us to be bearers of life in a world which is distorted and broken into pieces due to various reasons. As we have begun this academic year, let us kindle and revitalize the breath of life, life giving spirit in our daily lives, in our table talks and in our theological discourses. Let us be an instrument of bringing life in all its fullness that was promised by Jesus Christ. Moving to the New Testament passage, the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 12, they picked another captiv captivating thing that has happened on the day of Pentecost. The disciples were filled with the power from above and started speaking in different tongues. The people who witnessed this were amazed to see the disciples who were illiterate speaking in their native languages. The day of Pentecost marks another act of filling the living, life giving spirit upon the disciples, which again signifies the breath of life. This breath of the Pentecost brought unity in diversity, where the plurality of God was expressed. In contrast to Genesis 11, where the ancient people united to remain in one place with one language and one culture, here the variety of languages spoken by the disciples were clear and therefore did not cause any confusion. But the ancient people who wanted to maintain monoculture and single language ended up in chaos which was totally against the will of God. But on the day of Pentecost, instead of confusion, the Jews from different linguistic backgrounds were surprised and shocked to witness the disciples speaking in their own languages and glorifying God just opposite to the Tower of Babel. The breath of Pentecost reminds us that we are a unity in diversity. As Apostle Paul says, we are the body of Christ. We are different parts of the body of Christ. For the body is one, but has many members. This requires the diversity of function. A body cannot be just an eye or an ear, but each serves one integrated functioning and living body. The breath of Pentecost invites us to give space for others to breathe. We are invited to accept others and be open to others. There is no claim of superiority or inferiority. We are interdependent and we are designed by God to live in this manner. They attempted, that is the ancient people, attempted to form a monolinguistic and monocultural community, but they failed. Through the spirit of Pentecost, God is re-emphasizing the plurality that was initiated from the beginning. In spite of our differences, we are united in Christ to breathe the breath of plurality which accepts all without any discrimination with the love of God, justice and peace. The post Hitler Germany after the Second World War witnessed so many challenges. Germans were all alone. They lost many lives in the battles. Many women became widows. Many children lost their parents. Their economy was crushed. However, the entire population reunited to rebuild their nation and wipe away the stains that Hitler brought in the form of racism. In this process of nation building, contributions came from different corners and from different people. And during this time, 
the German pastors, the Christian pastors, the evangelical pastors who are otherwise called as Beyantes or government officials took up the role of nurturing and counseling the people who are suffering in order to come out of their trauma and to build a society without any sort of discrimination, war, injustice and racial discrimination against others. Recently, the German president Frank Walter Steinmeier said on the commemoration of celebrating the end of the Second World War, soon after the World War we were all alone, but we are not alone now. It is because we accepted the fabric of unity and plurality and we started rebuilding our community. The spirit of togetherness in spite of the differences enabled them to gain power and victory. Dear friends, God is inviting us to be clothed with the spirit of Pentecost which did brought unity in the context of diversity. In a multi-denominational and multi-faith context, the spirit of Pentecost invites us to have the heart of acceptance and openness to learn to others, to learn from others and to create a spirit of ecumenism. May the good Lord help us to revitalize his breath of life and be clothed with the spirit of Pentecost in order to bring life in all its fullness in our personal, communal and societal lives in order to make this world a better place to live for everyone and eradicate the cry of people like George Floyd. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, who breathed the spirit of life, enable us to be bearers of life and to bring life in abundance to others and to the entire creation. Help us to understand our compound nature and our interdependence with our fellow humans and the rest of the creation. Use us as instruments of healing and instruments of bringing peace and justice in the context of uncertainty. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. Go forth knowing that God's Spirit unites us. As we seek to love and serve the Lord, God's Spirit inspires us, giving an ever stronger vision of God's promises for the world. God's Spirit empowers us, even as we wait the fullness of those promises. May the blessings of the Triune God, Father, Son and the Holy Ghost, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.